now we will talk about the historical context. The transition from the Spanish colonial rule to American colonial rule. The American colonial rule in the Philippines was a formative period in Philippine history. It was brutal and beneficent, grasping and generous at the same time. The Filipinos moved from an authoritarian Spanish regime into autonomy and eventually independence. One must not forget though that there was a short-lived Philippine Republic before the colonization of the Philippines by the United States of America. As mentioned, there were benefits brought by American colonization, such as mass secular public education, the state university system, and the use of English for some products of official colonial policy. However, rural poverty grew, Manila's urban problems worsened, and the dependence upon America is almost in all aspects of life. All these changes were mirrored in the cartoons. The brutal American conquest of the Philippines provoked the outrage of the Filipinos, especially the nationalists. However, the relatively liberal U.S. censorship laws after military rule in 1901 provided an outlet for their protest. Unlike during the Spanish colonization, which simply censored the press, the United States was more tolerating. However, there was still the threat of a libel or sedition charges that will imprison editors, actors, or authors. The editors, artists, and writers all lived and worked in Manila. They expressed its discomfort and decadence in some of the cartoons, mostly depicting poverty, corruption, and prostitution. Manila underwent changes into becoming a modern colonial metropolis. Upon the arrival of the United States Army in Manila, they noticed its poor health and sanitation conditions. By 1910, it now had a sewage system and a modern public hospital. The Americans also made vaccination compulsory, which led to decrease in malaria. As Manila grew, the cracks began to appear. It did not have the transportation infrastructure or the social services to respond to a large impoverished population. Hospitals were even forced to turn away charity cases just for space. Moreover, the Americans failed to give Manila a local government that could solve its own problems. The police later reflected the city's maladministration laziness, and systematic corruption. Now we will talk about the distant provinces. Manila and the provinces was said to be a world apart. Coverage of provincial developments was infrequent and uneven. The Manila press portrayed the provinces as ridiculous. As you can see in the first cartoon, the text there translates as convenient blindness, Diego's de convenientia. It is a satirical comment on the provincial's preoccupation with gambling, which was widespread to everyone, including the government officials. The second cartoon translated as the rich get richer and the poor poorer. It shows the sugar industry easing upon lavish credit while the rice industry languishes. The only provincial topic exempt from general neglect was the plight of the peasants. Vicente Soto's The Independent was the one consistently concerned about rural social conditions. It condemned wholesale land grabbing in Web Asia and the abuse of money lenders. Land usurpers used the titling process using false declarations to claim holdings that were cleared and worked by poor peasants for many years. The first cartoon, 
why the tenant farmer rebels shows the forms of landlord usury used to strip tenant farmers of their rightful share of the harvest. The second cartoon shows a city capitalist using the Torrens title process, a land titling process which required relinquishment of customary claims to issue clear title to grab lands in Nueva Ecija. Colonial Condition Colonialism penetrated the very social fabric of the Philippines. It influenced culture, politics, economy, and class relations. After the brutal conquest of America to colonize the short-lived First Philippine Republic, the United States promised to give Filipinos independence as soon as they were, in the USA's judgment, of course, capable of self-governance. This compelled some Filipino nationalists to collaborate with the Americans in order to steer the Philippines into capable self-governance. What these Filipino nationalists who collaborated cannot change from within the American system, the radical nationalists attack using the press and popular protest. American opportunists crowded Manila in order to seek well-paid government jobs at the expense of Filipino taxpayers. The Filipino leaders then bartered their collaboration for Filipino move appointments, a move to take control of the government. By 1916, a Philippine legislature framed colonial laws which were executed by a largely Filipino bureaucracy, the Filipinization or the gradual transfer of American governmental responsibilities to Filipino finally occurred. This specific cartoon presents one the peasant holding back a pack of yapping dogs who represent the Americans. During the first decade of U.S. colonial rule, the nationalists fought the revival of Spanish prior influence. Early cartoonists directed, directed some satire against the Spanish priests and their influence over pious Filipinas and Filipinos. The anti-friar campaign was a continuation of the Filipino nationalist struggle against Spanish prior influence. The start of the U.S. colonial rule brought an end to the friar's formal influence. However, due to their vast health and religious influence, they were able to rebuild their control over Philippine society on a less formal basis. The cartoon here in this particular uh, slide accused the friars of stealing gifts for the saints' images. The Spanish text on the left states that the image said that it is better if you will sell the jewelry to help the poor, like my son, Jesus Christ. She also remembered that she had another crown in which the friar replied that they sold it. The Tagalog text on the right, on the other hand, asked the devotees to donate their jewels to a friar-owned institution in order to feed the poor. The friar interrupted and said, not too loud, they may find out our secret. The Ilustrado Nationalists were Spanish educated and still had an affection for their adopted culture. As the USA began its cultural colonization, some Ilustrados opposed the Americanization of their society. They felt that America was propagating a degraded culture. Systematic political corruption also attracted concern. The entire bureaucracy in 1921, during this time, was already Filipinized. The Filipino public servants themselves gradually declined into a privileged class, more concerned with personal gains rather than national advancement. 
The cartoons also depicted economic inequalities wherein the Filipino was viewed as an economic alien in the Philippines because Americans already dominated the economic activities in the country. The cartoons also portrayed how the Filipinos have always been historically divided due to their economic and social status and even their religion. To wrap up, the historical context of the book talk about the following. The transition from Spanish to American colonial rule, the emerging corruption among politicians and the police, and the growing influence of U.S. colonization, especially in the educational system it imposed to the country.